we needed to hear Bernie Sanders speak because why Bernie Sanders always sticks to the things and the issues that unite us. And by the way, he right. did he in his rebuttal before before anything else, CNN her. cut it out. He did thank Stacey Abrams and yeah. he, he he did all that. And, and, and that's some scandalous shit. Them cutting it out and kind of setting this image that Bernie's like not cool and stuff like that. The, he the first thing he did was uh, thank uh, Stacey Abrams. Let's go to number uh, the beginning number A over here because Bernie starts off by mocking the president mm -hmm. okay by going hottest economy right so take a look what he does right here in number number 48 we're going to start this off trump has told the american people that the u.s economy is the hottest economy anywhere in the world that it is really booming well that may be true for the members of his um, mar-a-lago country club where the price of admission has doubled Great. to two hundred thousand uh, dollars, for those folks who go to Trump's club, and for the wealthiest people in our nation, Trump is right. Uh, the economy is really booming. In fact, for many of President Trump's billionaire friends, the truth is they have never ever had it so good. But for the middle class, okay, stop that real quick. Right off the bat, fam. He sets the picture. He paints the picture. More of the same. Income inequality. All these guys, the guys who go to his club, mm -hmm. they're the ones who receive the tax break. They're the ones who are prospering. Pro prospering. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So, again, there's socialism for the rich and, and you know, horrible late-stage capitalism for the poor. I like how Bernie always focuses on the economics right off the bat. Yes. He plays no games. He goes straight into that. Yeah, And, and that's where we're all united. So, where we're all united, because this, right, this next part is that... What's going on today? Because we talk about this all the time when they say, oh, there's all this growth. But all the growth is for the top 1%. Mm -hmm. All the growth is for the top 4%. Where are the rest of us at? Well, Bernie sets the stage. Check out this next part. Part B. Working families of our country, the truth is that the economy is not so great. Over the last year, for example, real inflation accounted for wages for the average and American worker is up by all of 1.2%, just $9.11 a week. In fact, real wages for that same worker, that average American worker, are lower today than they were in 1973. Let me repeat that. The average American worker, after adjusting for inflation, is earning less today than he or she did 46 years ago, despite huge increases in productivity. Okay. Sadly, millions of American workers are now forced to work two or three jobs just to pay the bills and to keep their heads above water economically. Fam, mm. he talks about what we're living. I mean, what we're doing. You know what I'm saying, fam? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the fact that we're so focused on just getting a fifteen minimum dollar wage. I mean, even even you know he's trying really hard, but even to me, that's that should already be a thing. Like, and the fact that every state has you know eight, nine, ten dollars an hour, like he says, and the fact that inflation has it, it, wages have decreased, you know, rebuttals that whole argument that you, we we're lazy, that we're not working hard enough, yeah, that, we're, that we're demanding too much. How are we going to pay for it? Well. Yeah. Well, look what's happened. We've actually decreased the, our, our our livelihood. We've decreased the, the the you know the way we're supposed to be going up or just moving down. Yeah, so. I think a lot of these Trump poor supporters coming in are echoing him. He says the economy's doing good. They always say that black unemployment's up. All this bullshit numbers, numbers. No, Bernie Sanders states it like it is. Hey, man, it ain't getting any better. It's getting worse. It's getting. He sets the picture. He paints that picture. It's getting better for these guys. They're the ones who benefited off these tax breaks. And what's going on with the everyday family? That's what's going on. And in this next part where I got a little emotional because it really, because we talk about 1973. That's when I was born. I'm almost 46 years of age. So in my lifetime, I've never seen my wages go up mm. technically. But here's how he backs it up with statistics. And this is why I love Bernie Sanders because he takes every single different group around of people doing stuff and he plants that seed. Go ahead, my man. In America today, and somehow or another, President Trump didn't mention this in his speech. We have more wealth and income inequality than almost any major country on earth. 
And it is more unfair, more unequal now than at any other time since the gilded age of the 1920s. Yes, the economy is great for the three wealthiest people in America who own more wealth than the bottom half of our country, 160 million Americans. Yes, the economy is great for the top 1% who now earn 46% of all new income in our economy. Yes, the economy is great for the top 25 hedge fund managers on Wall Street who made nearly twice as much income last year as all 140,000 kindergarten teachers in our country. 25 hedge fund managers. Yeah, the economy is great for the five richest people in America who have seen their wealth go up by over $100 billion since Trump was elected, and for corporations that have announced over one trillion dollars in stock buybacks in 2018 alone. Yes, the economy may be great for those folks, but it is absolutely not booming for the nearly 80 percent of American workers who live paycheck to paycheck, desperately hoping that their child doesn't get sick, praying that their car doesn't break down, or that they don't lose their job. All right. Well, yeah, that's we we lumped those two in the one. But once again, he talks about the statistics, and I love the way he kind of points out, like, look, these fucking twenty five hedge fund managers are mm-hmm. making the same as one hundred forty thousand teachers. We've seen the teacher strikes. We've seen what they're fighting for. They're not even fighting for higher wages here as much in LA. They're fighting for the kids, for making sure that the kids get the education they deserve. And then we have these twenty five head head fund managers. Um, making all this money and all these billionaires increasing their wealth. And it's yeah. it's literally these people talk about socialism like it's this plague when they yeah. already have it for the one percent. And and and, you know, and all 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 this is is a rebalancing of where this this money goes. Yeah. And and uh, I love it the way in the form he did it with it mocking him. We're going to show a picture right here. <laughs> well, well, what he says, he kept on saying it's not a hot economy. Watch him right here. Number 530, when he goes and he says these things, <laughs> when he puts the air quotes on, you got to love it when Bernie's using air quotes. This is not the strongest economy we have <laughs> ever had. Right there. The strongest He's economy. Fun of Trump. Just mocking him the whole time. It's not the strongest. hottest, the strongest. And, and the last thing I'm going to say positive about him is real quick is, uh, when he just says this, I wanted to point this out, fam, because I know we want to make sure that we talk about some of the things we don't like. But when he acted presidential as can be, and he really, when I was listening to the speech, when he said this, I said, man, this this guy needs to deserve the president. Watch how he just addresses really simply, really quick. Yeah. My fellow Americans, if the overwhelming I love majority it. of Americans... I love it. Want I just want to get that out. When he said my fellow Americans, enormous. I was like, <laughs> wow, he is acting presidential. Right. Like, I stood up and I was like, Bernard, you need to be the president of the United States. Fam, what do you got? He pretty much is acting like the president of the United States. I mean, I think a, more people watch his State of the Union to actually hear about the things happening because Trump doesn't address any of them. All that Trump's addressing is, oh, yeah, we're free. The economy's great. Mm-hmm. Look at these uh, these these white people that were affected by these illegal immigrants, like these couple of people. We're not talking about yeah. the, the... Which was uh, disgusting. The domestic terrorists that yeah. are constantly c- killing people in, within our own country. We're just going to focus on, like, the handful of, of bad immigrants that we might get, yeah. you know? And, and and Bernie is focusing on, on, on the problems that are affecting people, and yeah. that's why people look to him. And I love the fact that he's uber-focused and uber u- user, uber lazy beam specific about what the things are when he ran against hillary clinton there was a lot of things to talk about hillary clinton having race issues or being racist but he said it when she when she called people super predators that's racist apologize for that stuff and when he mimicked you know those kids that was racist and implying that you know all foreigners are bad or all immigrants coming from central and south america are bad but the one part we also want to talk about right now the bad which is g mm. is that we talked about this isn't that uber bad but we had mentioned it about when he had talked about the specifics of voter suppression he kind of 
to mention the governors, which he was implying the Georgia, the Florida situation. Take a quick look here. We got 24 seconds uh, of Mr. Sanders talking about that. We're going to break it down a little bit about this. But somehow or another, he didn't talk about governors' efforts all across this country. Mm -hmm. Governors who are trying to suppress the vote and make it harder for poor people or people of color to vote. You can't talk about freedom in America and ignore the massive amounts of voter suppression taking place, denying people the right to participate in our democracy. Fam, now I had mentioned to you that I that was not the greatest thing in the world because I think he's just naming one side of voter suppression, which we know targeted people of color in Georgia, targeted people of color in Florida. They suppressed their vote, and that is true. But a lot of people in the middle, the people who've walked away from the process, one of the reasons they walked away is they feel there's no integrity in their elections, and he had left that part out. In other words, if he had said all the elections across the board need to be fair, then I thought that would have been more powerful rather than just kind of sectioning out the governor's situation. Sorry, I was trying to sneeze. <laughs> Go ahead, fam. Um, Help um, me out with that. Am I right or wrong there? I don't know. I mean, I kind of I kind of like that he mentioned that. I think it's very important to mention that, especially in regards to it uh, relating to Stacey Abrams, how they've tried to paint him as this, you know, anti um, this racist candidate or this this guy that doesn't really look into people of color. I think it's important that he as a potential presidential candidate mentions that. And I also think that what happened in 2016 is something that's uh, difficult to touch back on because a lot of people don't want to. Uh, touch on that i do think he should have mentioned something about that maybe in a different way like say um there you know there are we need to work on our own election integrity mm -hmm. um in general but i mean i'm glad he did mention that uh, yeah. and i don't think it's like the worst thing he could have done i think he's trying to appeal to a lot of, of america and i think he should because yeah. he's running for president so. well i think that when he's kind of talking about the governors he's kind of somewhat signaling to people on the left whatnot i think those people in the middle he missed an opportunity i could be wrong uh, i would have liked him to mention both forms of voter suppression but that's why this next part kind of leads into the area where we can't stand it uh, and, and i swear to god this this has got to be he had to make a deal with chuck chuck schumer he had to say chuck i'll give you one thing chuck one thing you want and i'll give it to you and it had to be this russia bullshit go ahead Could it be because his budget proposed massive cuts to Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security in direct violation of his campaign pledge? There it is. How could Trump not talk about the reality that Russia, through cyber warfare, interfered in our election in 2016, is interfering in democratic elections all over the world? And according to the heads of his own national security agencies, attempted to interfere in the 2018 midterm elections. Fam, this is the part that really pissed me off. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't like this either. But again, I also think he, he pivots from this point. He barely mentions it. And then he goes on to things he actually cares about. I think it's important that someone like him does this because someone like Tulsi isn't going to do that. And I think... Tulsi will get the brunt of it, and then she will clear the way for him, and then he can yeah. choose where to go with it. I think it's very tactful. I think, um, you know, it's hard to hear, but I understand why he's doing it. And I also uh, like that he said interfered. Um, but I would like to, you know, eventually hear him say, you know, we interfere yeah, yeah. in every election. Yeah. We have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. But I think we have some another candidate that does that. And I, uh, she'll push him there, and he... You know, and vice versa. I think yeah. it's going to help him in the long run. I hope so. It's it's really hard to hear, but yeah. I think it is know, hard to hear. He because, doesn't yeah. focus on it though. He doesn't all. focus on it. He kind of goes over it, whatnot. And you know, I, once again, he's saying that they're messing with all these elections. Well, we know better than anybody that we've screwed with more elections than anybody. Mm -hmm. We're doing it in Venezuela right now, and that mm -hmm. was also another area I don't want to get into. It could have been a little bit more on Venezuela. And once again, mm -hmm. acknowledge the fact that Russia is not the reason why we have Donald Trump. The reason why we have Donald Trump is this awful party that's still will not change and we are trying to change them.